Welcome back to Smitty's Learning Room. Today we're going to have a look at healthcare in Australia and start by having a look at the dot point which looks at health facilities and services. So when we have a look at healthcare in Australia we look at the relationships between the different governments, um, health insurance funds, public and private providers or doctors, uh, institutions such as hospitals and community health services and what do they actually provide and they they aim to provide diagnosis treatment rehabilitation and care so in in short we have a look at this question what is the role of healthcare in australia and it is to provide quality health facilities and services to meet the health needs of all australians so if we have a look back at those people who are responsible for health care, we have a look at that's um, a combination of the relationships between governments and public and private areas to provide that quality health care facilities and services. So having a look at this picture here in relation to health care in Australia, we start at the top with um, the Commonwealth Government or the Federal Government and obviously comes down to under state and local government. Now these governments are responsible for policies, finances and health programs. Um, if we come across the other side, we have a look at health insurances and we look at public, which is where Medicare comes under, and then our private insurances such as HCF, Bupa, NIB and Medibank, which are optional uh, health insurance that people can pay for services. Then we start to have a look at the healthcare providers and we have institutionalised providers, which come under hospitals and nursing homes, which are often government funded and then non-institutionalised healthcare providers, so community health services, medical services, health promotion agencies and pharmaceutical services. So when we look at the range and types of healthcare facilities and services, we look at these two big groups here. We have institutional care and non-institutional care. Now, institutional care is having a look at hospitals, so whether they're public, private or psychiatric hospitals. Um, nursing homes, so they're like hospitals sort of with cost with a home for our elderly people and ambulances as, as well all come out of that institutionalised care. We then have a look at non-institutionalised care and this is doctors and specialists, dental, optical, chiro, physical, community and public health and research organisations. So if you have a think about um, the concept of institutionalised in that that sort of facilities and services are all within like big uh, institutions such as a hospital or a nursing home or ambulances being a product of that hospital or institution. So when we have a look at hospitals in Australia, we've got public and private hospitals and the easy way to sort of have a think about it is that a public hospital is available to anybody and a private hospital is available to anyone who has private health insurance. So people remember that private health insurance is optional and people pay for that service. So I guess when you have a look at um, public hospitals, we have lots of people in those hospitals and they're government funded. You might find that there are some private patients within a public hospital, but they'll have services that are available to them which are of higher standard, or it might be a case of being able to have a room by themselves as opposed to sharing with um, public patients. And then in private hospitals, there's obviously um, less patients, um, then there's more money available to provide services to those, um, to those patients. The other thing is when we look at uh, private hospitals, you'll notice that there's a lot more elective procedures that happen in private hospitals because people will pay for those elective procedures, whereas if elective procedures under the public system can take quite a few years to process because people are put on a waiting list. So I guess the big thing is we've, we've got to have a look at the equity of these sort of hospitals. You know, is it fair that people who have private health insurance get essentially better health care? Is that equitable for Australia as a whole? Or do we see that, you know, no, it's fair because they pay this money, so they're paying more money, therefore they've got increased access to health care. So when we have a look at public hospitals, they're operated and financed by the state government and the federal government, and they serve a greater proportion of elderly and very young, like newborn patients. And public hospitals also appear to provide more highly specialised and complex services such as heart and lung transparency. And this is mainly done in teaching hospitals throughout the country. And sometimes they provide day-to-day -day surgery 
and most of the non-admitted patients, so outpatients. So when we have a look at private hospitals and how they differ, um, they're obviously different because they're not run by government, they're owned and operated by individuals and community groups, but they also provide um, same day surgery and perform more short stay surgeries. As I said before, elective procedures and less complex procedures, such as operations on the eye, ear, nose, mouth, throat, and musculoskeletal system, um, are usually performed in these private hospitals. Patients in all hospitals will be classified as either public or private according to their service of choice. So for example, if they're a private patient and they're in a public hospital, they'll still be identified as private. And the difference is that, that a, um, a private patient can choose private treatment, which means that they get to choose which doctor they'd like to be seen by but they obviously have to pay for this service and accommodation is provided by the hospital and the doctor. Now, Medicare and private health insurance of the patient will refund most of these expenses. The issue of equity and access to public hospitals has been debated in recent years and it's something that comes up quite often, especially around private health insurance and that there's evidence now sort of saying that private patients have a more rapid access to elective surgery um, than public patients, so therefore that their quality of life is greater than what public patients' quality of life because they're spending less time suffering from illness or injury because they can be treated straight away. As a result of this, urgency categories have been applied to patients' conditions, uh, especially around elective surgery. So as well as hospitals, nursing homes are institutional health providers. Now, nursing homes can provide care for long-term nursing attention for those who are unable to look after themselves. And this is where we're mainly looking at, especially in Australia, the, our ageing population. Obviously, people who are chronically ill, people with dementia and people with a disability. Some nursing homes cater specifically for young people with a disability. So, obviously, there's a wide range of nursing homes available in Australia. There are three types of nursing homes. So we have private charitable, private for profit and state government. But the government, the federal government, assumes the responsibility for most of the financial cost of running nursing homes in Australia. The government has put in place aged care assessment teams to assess elderly people or younger people who may need to be in a young person specific uh, nursing home which help identify and ensure that only highly dependent people are placed in residential care. So when we have a look at the concept of, of nursing homes, we obviously have an increased care, and then there's this other concept of hostels, which have a minimal care. So this identifies the fact that there are people who um, may have some health issues and need some level of care, but not necessarily a high level of care. Now, hostels provide long-term accommodation and basic level of health care for young people with disability and the aged and frail. Now, when we look at psychiatric hospitals, it's very much changed since, say, when your parents were your age. And psychiatric care has gone from this institutionalised sort of concept where people who needed psychiatric help or health care um, were sort of sectioned off from the rest of the world in some kind of psychiatric institutionalised hospital and it's now looking at the concept of having these people within hospital and community health areas. Given the reduction in extended hospitalisation of people with mental illness, the number of public psychiatric hospitals has fallen. So this is obviously showing that because we're having this relationship or this partnership with um, psychiatric hospitals and in hospitals and community settings, that psychiatric hospital numbers have decreased. And at the same time, there's been a corresponding increase in the number of beds in community-based residential services for psychiatric patients. 
The range of service providers for mental health care today includes general practitioners, private psychiatrists, community-based public mental health services, and specialised residential and mental health care facilities. And this is a great example of why psychiatric hospitals are still an institutional thing. It can also sort of swing to non-institutionalised because it's showing that the community has such a large role in working with and treating these psychiatric patients. So now we start having a look at the non-institutional um, health services that are available. And we have GPs, which are the main group, which are the general practitioners, um, which work out of either their own doctor's surgery or medical centre, hospitals, and they might even be um, private surgeons. And then obviously a lot of this is covered under Medicare. So doctors, specialists and other health professionals provide a number of services. And the most extensively used service is that is one of GPs who diagnose to treat minor illnesses like um, the common cold. Under Medicare, all Australians are eligible to claim refunds for their payments for medical services outside of hospitals and for services as private patients in hospitals. The whole or part of the cost of a GP consultation is reimbursed by Medicare. So this is showing that um, with the combination of Medicare and general practitioners that we're actually providing equitable health care for all by saying that all Australians are able to access general practitioners at a reduced of either partial or whole cost. When we look at health related services, so we look at sort of specialist services, so hospitals, private surgeries, operations and specific service and these include ambulance work, chiropractor, dentistry, nursing, occupational and speech therapy. Um, and interestingly, with dentists, the number of dental services has risen in recent years as an increasing number of people retain their natural teeth and also to, as a result of the trend towards preventative dental care. Now, this trend could be a result of um, government funding for families to provide their children with dent dental checkups and visits. So outside of GPs and specialists, we also have community supports. Now, community supports are a significant factor in the provision of an environment that is conductive to positive health. And these supports promote health but are not recognised part of healthcare system. The food industry, for example, implements policies to ensure that the production and delivery of food that meets health regulation and food safety standards and displays nutritional information on food packaging to inform the public about nutrition. Um, another example um, are town planners and engineers as they have a role in providing infrastructure that is safe and promotes positive health. So for example, um, putting in safe roads in towns and communities and increasing areas for physical activities such as playgrounds and sports fields within the communities. Finally, we have a look at pharmaceuticals. Now pharmaceuticals in Australia um, are provided or sorry are supplied through hospitals and doctors and private prescription and obviously over the counter in shops and chemists. Over the counter medicines account for about one third of all sales. And most prescription drugs sold in Australia are subsidised through the Commonwealth Government's Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme or the PBS and through this scheme the patient pays a set amount for a prescription drug and the government pays the balance of the cost of that drug to the pharmaceutical manager, manufacturer. Um, drugs are subsidised further for people who have special needs, including pensioners, concession card holders, such as low-income earners, war veterans, and people with disabilities. And the subsidy reduces the cost of a prescription drug to under $6. Um, some people who are chronically ill or require long-term medications are protected from excessive costs by the PBS safety net. Um, the aim of the safety net scheme is to ensure that no one is precluded for financial reasons from access to the medicines they need. And people who do not have a government concession card become eligible for the safety net card when um, over $1,300 has been spent on pharmaceutical benefit scheme medicines.
So having a look at the pharmaceutical benefit scheme, it's a way that the government has implemented initiatives so that all Australians have access to medicine, whether they are of a low socioeconomic status or not, because the government identifies that some people in Australia who do ha have um, a sound income may suffer from a chronic illness, which means that they need to be provided with pharmaceutical drugs on a regular basis, which can be quite an expense. So the government then puts into the bill for, the, for those pharmaceutical drugs as well. So in summary, it's important to, for this dot point to understand um, the health facilities and services. So we're looking at private hospitals, public hospitals, psychiatric hospitals and nursing homes, and that's in relation to institutionalised care. We then have a look at non-institutionalised care, so medical services, health-related services, community services and pharmaceuticals.